Because the lion has escaped out of the park. Let's do it. Hey, get away from the bed. Right, Jeff. Get away from Ooh. the bed. Okay, what is it? We're out of here. We're not waiting for this. Idealistic young veterinary students descend on South Africa to run the remote Haluvu Carney Animal Hospital. They will work under the guidance of Dr. Greg, the resident vet, and his health technician and community outreach leader, Gypsy. The animals' lives, and in many cases, the livelihoods of their owners, are in their hands. It's a brutal learning ground where they will be faced with the constant threat of physical danger and emotional burnout. Do they have what it takes to become a frontier vet? The students meet for the first time, discovering who they'll be journeying with over the next month. Six are from South Africa, and two of the eight vets are international students. Hello, I'm Drew. Where are you from? Are you sounding close? Nebraska, United States. Okay. Drew has traveled from a world away, geographically and culturally. I kind of worry that I might offend people or, you know, say something wrong because I don't really know the culture that well. I'm the impolite German. Tina from Germany is a perfectionist. It's another way in Europe than here in South Africa. I like to have things done the proper way. And maybe that's <laughs> sometimes causing problems, but I also try to be easy. For Delaray, the bush is his second home. It's just a way of life, being in the bush getting in June with it. For Niven, becoming a vet is a chance for him to chart his own course. None of us attend class. It's so boring. He can't wait to get out into the field. I mean, to conform to a normal eight to five job and it does not interest me in any way. Although now a graduate student, Jonathan still has some doubts about becoming a veterinarian. I fell in love with chemistry, uh, organic chemistry. Somewhere, somehow, I ended up uh, doing vet, uh, veterinary science. It's Roxy's first time away from her parents. She's most at home with animals and books. Animals aren't cool, but, and people can be. Charlotte loves being a vet and is up for all the opportunities that lie ahead. It's exciting, but it's also quite a bit of pressure. You just gotta take the leap, I suppose. And for Agatha, this experience will test her confidence in her abilities. I believe I'll be able to put it together, but that's the one thing I'm scared of. Not being able to pick up, okay, what's that disease or, because I'm not the brightest kid in class, you know. Everyone in? Yep. Yeah. Shlivikani, yeah. here we go. It's a six-hour drive to the remote clinic, far and away from the modern vet clinics found in the city. Summer loving happens so fast. Let it go crazy for me. Some of them seem like very nice people. Others of them I don't think I said a single word to. We're all different people. Some are like, bam, out there. Some are more, you know, quiet. Yeah, I'm more like I'm gonna... <laughs> <laughs> The city gives way to rural countryside. I hadn't really seen poverty like that before. It doesn't look like the best living conditions. Some of the animals that we've seen, they're like really in, in poor condition. I really do believe we can make a difference. But it won't be easy. It won't be easy at all. How's it going? Hey, Greg. Good, hi. Jonathan. Jonathan. Hello. Nice to meet you. Hi, Tina. Tina. Greg. Hi, Hi. nice to meet you. Drew, nice to meet you. Dr. Greg is the point person for the young vets who are now charged with running the animal hospital. He's a 20-year veteran of the clinic. The clinic provides vital vet services to the community, which is in dire need. It serves 20 villages and resources are limited, but the needs are many as they get animals big and small, wild and domestic. How are you guys feeling? Nervous. Nervous. <laughs> <laughs> a little overwhelmed. <laughs> okay. Have you guys got any experience or practical experience? No. That's a good description. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all past exams, I take it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's a good start. <laughs> that's what you're here for, to uh, get the practical experience. And in a way, you can make mistakes here because it's part of your training. 
You don't have to be perfect. That's what you hear. You had to learn, you had to grow, and you had to get those skills so that when you get out there, in a year's time, that you uh, hopefully know what you're doing. Yeah. OK, uh, you guys got your greens. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And gumboots? Yes. Yeah. Uh, let's get into greens and gumboots, please, straight away. Cool. Okay. Cool. For the vet grads, the leap from books to reality starts now. Roxanne. Right, um, there's a puppy here that uh, was taken or someone took off a family. It seemed to be limping and the family didn't want the puppy. So just do a basic clinical and then get back to me. Thank you. We've grown up with dogs being more than pets, being more like family members. Scratching, maybe? Scratching, maybe? Mm-hmm. Looks like it. Yeah. Yeah, we've got something. Delaray sees the foreleg is badly broken. A shattered forelimb in a clinic with no radiograph machine and few resources is a big problem. For surgery, it's going to cost a lot, so you may have to use and euthanize it as well. If someone brings you a healthy animal that you could rehome, you don't want to just euthanize her when you could quite easily find her a home and she could be happy. The first day on the job brings challenges all around the clinic, as Drew soon finds out. You gotta be kidding me. They call it a long drop here. It's just a big concrete hole that you go to the bathroom in. A young boy brings his puppy in because it's lethargic and not eating. Agatha starts a standard examination. That's 40 times 6. The um, diagnostic is the basics of VET 101. 18, 120, 160, 200. No? 40, 18, 120, 160, 200. 200. Jonathan, I'm trying to get blood here for blood smear. Mm -hmm. Where's the best place to go? Tip of the ear. Tip of the ear. Mm. Is it? I prick it with the needle. Okay. Like so. Oof. Was that a prick, or you just touched it? <laughs> I pricked it. <laughs> no, I you didn't. Myself, so. Yeah, you you pricked yourself, but not the ear. But the blood is so watery, though. Can you see? I can see. It's not going to be enough. What do I do? I don't want to call Greg. Charlotte receives a surprise package. Two diarrhea-covered puppies in desperate condition. Hey Johnny. Aren't you even gonna use some gloves, Charlie? This is the worst case. They weren't happy dogs. It's just so difficult to lecture people on a situation you're not from. I don't come from your background, so how dare I judge you and your background? It's just a patient to me. Nothing more, nothing less. I treat it the best I can. That's it. <coughs> you surviving there, Johnny? <coughs> I don't know if I was thinking straight the day I decided to choose this, choose this profession. That's a boy, right? You have to um, note down whether it's male or female. Hey, Aggie. Hey, Tina. Um, I think it's a boy, but I'm not sure now. I'm getting a bit confused. Do you think it's also a boy? It's a girl. No! <laughs> It has a vulva. I see that. Yeah. But, oh my word. The next time I see another puppy, I'm never going to make that mistake again, you know? 40 times 6. 200, right? No. What do you want to do? Well, obviously, I would really like to fix it. Um, okay. Yeah. It's a sweet little puppy in it. It's quite a heavy first case for you. Um, worst case scenario is take the leg off. The best case scenario, we can try and fix the leg and it heals. Uh, you will do the operation. All of it. <laughs> yeah. So an operation either way is going to be fairly traumatic for it. So do you think you can do it? Because I've placed one stitch or three stitches so far. <laughs> I want to be able to try to save every animal. Yeah, good luck, Foxy. <laughs> uh, I'm so glad it's not my case right now. 
Agatha analyzes a specimen from her puppy. I need to consult with you. Do you by any chance know what this might be? See? I'm thinking it might be a mite, but I'm not sure. I think it's a flea. It's a, yeah. Like yes, it's a flea. Why is it? Charlotte, on her first real case, realizes she's made a critical mistake. Overdosed that boy. It's not it's very good on man. Let's say it's antibiotic. It's not, it's not like I'm a man that's going to mm -hmm. be toxic. Yeah. Can you just ask her to watch this mm -hmm. little guy? Because I don't know. The what... side effects could be fatal. I find myself working with a gut feeling. I'm definitely more of a doer than a stop and go check the information up beforehand which is maybe not the best thing at all times. Overdosed her dog, which could possibly die now. Eesh. What do you got? Well, not much because there's not much on the slides, but... Can I have a look? Did you find anything? I was still looking, but so far not. <laughs> Did you stay on the right side? It was on the right side. <laughs> I got the little parasite oh, that was on you? the skin. Oh, nice. But, yeah, I just need to well, we got what figure it is. out what it is. It's a flea of some sort. Some sort. Yes, we can't oh, remember the scientific name. Oh, <laughs> we did, the, did those things so many years ago. Okay, that's a trick question. Okay, have a look. It's not a flea. It's a mite, as Agatha first suspected. You see, I know it. I know that. It's just I can't remember the name. I. <laughs> good. So it's got mites. It's got fleas, and it's got a skin infection. If you get rid of most of those problems, it will probably sort its anemia out. Okay, so you're awesome. You gotta Agatha wraps up the puppy's treatment. Go in. Though she's from Africa, she doesn't speak the boy's native language, Shangon. And then every day, ne? not not we we wash her in my three months. Come here, guys. Come here, guys. This language thing. Regular clinic hours are over for the day. So everything just takes seven times as long, and so uh, it's painful for them. I think this is to be expected. This is this is where they're starting. They will only get better from here. Night has fallen, and the students take in a quiet moment of reflection before Dr. Greg shows them to their lodging. Roxy's mind is on her upcoming surgery. We don't even have radiographs so that we can actually look at what's going on and plan beforehand. The feeling is just different to what you would have when you're in the classroom. Yeah, everything is just hands-on. You've got so much responsibility. Now you've got to handle the patient, you've got to handle the owner, you've got to handle the equipment, you've got to handle your other colleagues. That's kind of a daunting experience. You have to be able to diagnose diseases and treat them. But I guess that will come with time, but still. Oh. <laughs> okay, guys, there's a lion has escaped out of the park. We've got to go. Get in your greens. Let's do it now. Go. A young cub got through a fence at the wildlife reserve. It's a danger to the community, and if not found soon, could die from dehydration. They've got to act fast. Okay, it's a lion and can come at you and eat you up. First time for everything, get away so from yeah. The fence, please. Hey, get away from the fence, please. Please Ooh. Move away from Ooh. the fence. Okay, there's a cub that's in the bushes. Um, it slipped through. Um, the pride is over there, the mother's over there, the mother's been calling. I just need to catch um, the cub and put it back under the fence. Um, move quietly, um, maybe stay a few meters away from the fence. If the electricity's off the fence, uh, she might, I mean, the lions can definitely come to the fence if they try. And I think if we head upright and try and sweep this way towards right. the fence, because when you get the lion or cub, what do you do? Just call it, call for it. Yeah, just let, let us know that it's, it's there. 
the main thing is once you once you see it to keep eyes on it I am definitely feeling a long way from home right now. As you walk along, just sweep with your torch um, to see if you can see any eyes. It'll be small little eyes, probably yellow or maybe green. Just looking for the lion cub. Just checking the ranger that uh, as soon as the lion cub sees us getting close, it just hunkers down and, and hides. I'm just making it quite hard. So we I haven't seen anything yet, so just hoping to be the lucky one to catch it. <laughs> this is ridiculous. <laughs> oh. We have thorns going across our face. Their strategy for finding the cub in the dark of night is not working, and the lioness is getting impatient. A new strategy is put in play. The students are spread out in pairs and sit quietly in the bush, listening for the cub to make a sound, giving away its hiding spot. When we hear the cub, we're gonna try to just focus in on where it is. I need a pee. <laughs> I need a pee. Use the bush. I can't. We're Get the scent, like scares it away. <laughs> How strong is the urine? It's just urine. So maybe it'll come. To the scent of the urine. Okay, rubbish now. I'm kind of in my element right now. Very romantic. I'm very sorry my boyfriend isn't here. <laughs> For first night, <laughs> it's quite a rough night. Um, yeah, I mean, the students haven't even touched base at all. They just arrived and they're out in the bush. A few lines on the other side of the fence. So I think they're a little bit nervous, a bit shell shocked. My biggest worry now is that it will come pouncing inside me. So I'm just keep, I just keep looking and looking and. But yeah, I mean, you can't do that much damage, right? You know, if it does, right? But a bit of a, <laughs> a rough introduction. Shush, we're supposed to be listening. Okay, well, what is that? We're out of here. We're not waiting for this. Ah. It's one thing I love to do, scaring people. <laughs> there was a little voice that said, maybe that's not the right thing to do. Agatha and Roxy think they hear the real cup. We thought we heard something, but then I, we both heard it the first time in that direction, and the second time I only heard it. But then my heart started beating very, very fast, and then we just kept quiet and didn't hear anything for the third time. And what did it sound like? It sounded like a kitten or a puppy, like almost whimpering. It wasn't a frog. I'm seriously, I'm not. Okay, where bots do you think you heard it? So it wasn't that side, it was this side. Yes, no, no, sorry, it's definitely. Okay. The cub is still nowhere to be seen. You know, we don't know if they've actually really heard it. Oh, there I go again, I was wrong again. There it is, there it is. Hey, 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 come on, come on. Can everyone just keep quiet as well, please? So what's the plan? Dave, just... We're gonna just hand it over the fence. Just drop it over. Come on, don't let it lose. Can we stand on the back here rather? Can we make it? Hey, yo, I'm on you. Mia? 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 You're gonna go fast in here. Actually, I'm gonna get it off there. Los! Los! Okay, right now, I'm going to. Right now, I'm going to leave here. 
Everybody stand back. Okay, hang on, let's just right, pull up. Yeah. Stand behind the vehicles. We helped. <laughs> we really helped. <laughs> Can we just take We heard it. Can I get some rocks and you both heard it. We thought we were crazy. <laughs> yeah, and then we had to decide okay, between Roxanne and I, who's going to stand up and go now because someone has to stay in case, you know? Oh, uh, yeah, no, he kind of grabs right here. Look at him. Oh, he defecated. Yeah. Oh, I'm a bit nervous. You don't want to see the inside of this. <laughs> Interesting first day. <laughs> first night. Yeah. <laughs> Nice to meet you, right. <laughs> So this is your <laughs> job. If it carries on like that, I'll be satisfied. <laughs> yeah, I never thought I'd see uh, Drew running that fast. <laughs> he wanted me to get eaten by the lion first. That's like a once in a million or a one in a, in a million experience. That's why we're here, man. That's why I'm here. Next time on Frontier Vets. It's right there. <laughs> they just hope he's alive when we come back. I cannot escape from these people.